This is Duke University. Uh, I am a, a senior admissions officer here at Duke University. I also graduated from Duke. I was very much involved in the Latino community and, and continue to be so. And the other part of my job, my favorite part of my job, is uh, working with current Latino students and helping to recruit uh, prospective Latino students just like you. Um, so Fausto has, has also been one of those very important members of, of a team that I have and, and we create a recruitment weekend for admitted Latino students. Um, so I hope that you can envision yourself coming to that one day. Um, and want to talk a little bit about um, really the, the importance of having you all in higher education. Um, there are studies that show that whether it's you or someone very much unlike you, when you interact with people who are different from you, you are more likely to be successful. Not just successful in your careers, um, but in, in life and social situations in general. So I think it's really important for you all to, to, to strive um, for, for the highest goals that, that you have. Um, and the, the most important place to start, of course, is, is where you are now in the classroom. And in order to, to start looking towards college, applying, um, and completing college, it really is about the, the academics that, that you're um, studying for now. So really focusing on, on working hard in school, um, but also your, your family responsibilities and your extracurricular activities, um, and being teenagers. So all of those factors are, are really important. Um, but from my perspective, in undergraduate admissions, we want students to, to create a more diverse community here on, on campus, and, and you all um, are really there to, to help us achieve that goal. A little bit, Miguel, about that experience of being for history students, that, uh, what do you have found in terms of? So, well, we are the Liberal Market in Espanol, on this. Um, for, I will do some, I will do some translating. Okay. Uh, por aproximadamente 10, 11 años estuve al frente del de Centro de Administración de eh, Estudiantes Internacionales aquí en la ciudad de Durán y compartíamos oficinas con eh, la organización que se conoce como el Centro de Pan. For 11 years I was uh, working in registration for the uh, uh, school district uh, joining uh, offices with the Centro Pan. Eh, durante este periodo eh, pasaron alrededor de 8.500 estudiantes internacionales y cerca de un 85% de origen hispano. El 500 uh, students international students uh, went through that office of registration of international students and 80% more or less were Latinos. Eh, para mí fue un privilegio eh, poder interactuar con todas estas familias que venían con diferentes tradiciones, diferentes creencias, diferentes idiomas, diferentes eh, formas de pensar, pero que venían en busca de esa oportunidad aquí en los Estados Unidos como nuevos residentes de este país. For me, it was a privilege to interact with families from, from many, many places of the world with their own languages and cultures and the ways of looking at the world uh, in, in their journey to get their children into education. Durante este periodo, en que bueno, ya son cerca de 17 años que estuve trabajando con el sistema escolar aquí en Durán, eh, tuve la oportunidad de organizar algunas orientaciones y charlas eh, o sesiones informativas con dos familias, posiblemente algunos de sus padres también, eh, eh, y animándolos a que buscaran la información de no solamente eh, eh, cómo funciona el sistema eh, de educación a nivel de elementaria o con el intermedio superior, sino también ir más allá, cómo tener acceso a los estudios universitarios. En doing this work for 17 years, uh, we organized several meetings in which we were stressing the importance of information, uh, information of how to navigate the educational system in the U.S. from elementary to middle to high school, all the way to college. We have to find that information. Y siempre fue una de las grandes retos que teníamos como staff o personal de escolar de cómo comunicar esta información, especialmente a los padres que muchas veces este, no tenían, eh, tenían la barrera del idioma o el desconocimiento de lo que es el acceso 
a eh, sistemas de universidades en los Estados Unidos o inclusive en los colegios comunitarios generales. And that's one of the big challenges uh, when you have to uh, give this information uh, to families who are struggling many other ways, but that have the problems of uh, language acquisition or, 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 or in order to understand uh, the complexities of the system uh, to go at the end get uh, their children to higher education. Y a pesar, como les estaba diciendo antes, de tener la experiencia de trabajar por más de 17 años con el sistema escolar aquí en el área, también soy padre de familia, soy padre de una hija que acaba de ingresar al college, está en el segundo año en el en, en college en, en, en RAE, y tuve que pasar esa experiencia, a pesar de que mi esposo y yo somos ingresados a la universidad de nuestros países, pero aquí es completamente diferente. Even for a, a person like me, Uh, I, I had that experience myself. I am a father of a, a father of a, of a girl who now is in the second year in a, in a university here in the Triangle. And for me, it was hard, even though my wife and I uh, uh, were graduates from a college in our country. Uh, sin embargo, yo este, animo a que esta información que usted está escuchando el día de hoy, por favor, la compartan con sus padres o familiares y e inclusive con sus hermanos menores porque está comprobado que cuando son familias de cuatro o cinco hermanos si los hermanos mayores tienen acceso a los estudios universitarios hay mayor posibilidad de que sus hermanos menores también sigan su, su ejemplo y también puedan tener más profesionales aquí en los Estados Unidos. Yeah, my invitation for you today is uh, to get, uh, get your hands on that information to share that information, the information that you're getting today and uh, along the way to your family. But if you are also uh, the elders in your family and you have younger siblings, please help them to, to understand how important it is uh, to, to get into college. Uh, because according to research, uh, in big families, when the older uh, siblings go to college, uh, the younger siblings go <laughs> Um, so I graduated from Riverside, um, what, four years ago? So, uh, there are seniors here. Um, I was in the same position as you, um, not that long ago, and now I'm going to be a senior here. Or I am a senior here, and I'll be graduating soon, but... Um, Where it all starts, I arrived to Durham when I was 10. That was back in 2004. Um, there weren't as many Latinos as there are now in Durham um, or in the Durham public school system. Um, so I think that that was a big um, challenge um, coming from, from Honduras and where the culture was completely different, immersing into um, a more Americanized culture and uh, school culture was what was difficult, but um, I think it's inevitable that um, as a minority, um, coming into a place where um, you know, you're, 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 you're the few, um, you're gonna feel like you're not part of that. Um, I found um, doing well in school, um, getting the best grades possible um, as a way to prove to me and to prove to, to anyone else that I, you know, that I was able just Just like anyone else, that despite being a, a minority, that I, I could do it. And um, you know, my, my parents brought me here um, with the idea of getting a better education, but I don't think they knew what all that meant. So along the way, from um, middle to high school, I, I don't think I knew a lot of the time what it meant to to get a better education, to to go into a college. Um, and it took a lot of um, You know, doing the work myself, going on, on the internet and, and trying to find out what it meant to apply to a good university, what the requirements for different tests, what qualities they, they value. Um, and I try to tie all those requirements and, and what they value to, to things that I was already doing, things that I was passionate about, things that I was um, doing in the community. Because it's, it's not just getting the best grades that um, will make you stand out when, you, when you're applying for a university. I think that that's one of the most important things. Um, but a lot of the people applying to a university are 
already have those, those good um, academic records. Um, what makes you stand out is, is how involved you are in your community and in things that you're very passionate about. Um, not just doing things just to fulfill a requirement of volunteer, certain volunteer um, hours or it's it's doing those volunteer hours but in, in an area that you that you're really passionate about and showing that passion and showing that you care I think it's gonna make um, anyone stand out um, so I try to do that I, I, I try to balance my academics um, in high school and um, also um, get involved in the community get involved with extracurricular sports different clubs in, in things that were that, that matter a, a lot to me, things around minorities, around Hispanic issues, um, and then you know, like as I got to my sophomore year, I don't know where I would, like what college meant at the time for me, um, and then you know, all along the way, I always try to find those teachers, counselors, or or other adults that you know that I knew cared for me and I knew would who kind of provide that, that mentorship. And sometimes those, those mentors don't, don't come like on their own. Sometimes it takes you going out and, 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 and finding them and asking questions, not being embarrassed to ask questions. There was a lot of things that I didn't know. There, there, there were a lot of questions that might have seemed very simple. Um, and, and perhaps I was embarrassed to ask them, but you know, in, in the end I took the courage to ask them and I think that that led me in the, in the right direction. Students, um, finding an area where you can contribute in, in, in an area where you're very passionate about, whether that's you know in the realm of, of immigration or other things, you know, helping um, minorities, youth, um, finding that that thing where, where you're passionate about and that you can talk about it. Um, for example, in a college. Uh, essay when, when you're applying for college there's a lot of times where you're going to have to speak about your experiences and touching on, on things that you're passionate about I think it's going to make you stand out from the rest of the students so that, that that's my um, I guess my recommendation to you guys find something that you're passionate about. Thank you so much. I want to go back to my, uh, my roots for a moment go back to the movie the film the, the documentary I'm, um, I was born in Cuba, and um, I came to the United States when I was 13. And my parents followed um, nine months later when my father's small store was taken over by the government. So, so he arrived in the United States um, with nothing. Everything he, he had worked very hard for was left behind. Um, he had to start all over again, sweeping floors, and then, you know, rising to be a salesman, and my mother also, and, and uh, making a living. We all had to go to work as soon as we had work permits, go to school, go to work. And one of the things my father said, which is exactly what Eduardo Padron, the um, president of Miami Dade College said, was, they can take everything away from you, but they can't take away your education. So study hard. And it was due to his um, insistence that I did not yield to the, um, to the attraction of going to work full time after high school. You know, there my sister, my older sister, had no problem doing that. She didn't want to go to college. She was never motivated. She wasn't very good at it. And I thought, well, you know, so what if I am good at it? She's making money. I should do that too. My father was completely against it. He knew that I was, you know, that I was good at school. And he didn't want me to do that. He wanted me to go on. He wanted me to go to college. And because of that, because he believed in me, I did that. I, I did that against all odds because I wasn't even trained in college. I was, I was given a business course. I wasn't even taught um, you know, how to prepare for the SAT. I bought a book. I taught myself and I got into college. And after college, I told myself, I'm not going to stop until I get the highest degree possible. 
because I've been working in an office, taking orders from people who are, I consider, um, not as smart as I am. And, and so I said, no way, you know? But my parents wanted me to have the kind of degrees that probably your parents wanted you to have, or want you to have, which are the professional degrees. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an accountant, be an engineer. Um, I want to open up your minds to the possibility of being what I am. I'm a college professor. If you don't necessarily like all your science courses or your math courses, if you have really enjoyed your history courses, your literature, literature courses, don't yield to the messages that we're getting from uh, a lot of sources now that the liberal arts don't need anywhere. Think about the possibility of studying these subjects seriously in college, in graduate school, getting a PhD. And that's what my program, the More Undergraduate Research Apprentice Program, helps students do. You're going to find information about it in your booklets. It's um, a program in the summer of your sophomore or junior years in college. So it's some time down the road. And we prepare you. And, um, and we give you room and board at UNC. We give you money. Uh, we give you a nice, hefty stipend. So it's a very cushy program. But you have to have the grades in college to apply to the program. And you have to have the interest of getting, going on and getting a PhD. And you saw that Miguel Rojas Otero has a PhD, and he has a job that's not necessarily teaching. So there are administrative positions that also employ you uh, with foundations and within the university and doing administration. So consider that as another option. But in any event, education is your ticket. Education is going to um, give you a good living and is going to make you proud, to make everyone around you proud. So that's my message to you uh, and my hope for your future. Right now, what is your motivation? Like, what classes are you taking right now? So in terms of classes that I'm taking, I, I finished most of my public policy um, requirements, most of my public policy classes. Um, but as um, Professor Brooks mentioned, I am pursuing the journalism certificate. So now I'm um, uh, doing uh, my journalism capstone class and also a journalism ethics class. But I'm also taking a contemporary history class on, on Latin America. Um, and then my fourth class, what is that? Uh, oh, uh, a marketing management class. Um, that, that's what my, um, my, my fall semester of senior year looks like. Those classes are lighter than, than, than usual. I've taken most of the difficult classes prior, but um, in terms of journalism, I, I, I think that it's very important to share your story and then to let people know the challenges that, that we go through and how we are also able to overcome them. So I come from a, a single mother household, and I think that you know, seeing how hard she worked, um, she she's always had two jobs. Um, she would always tell me, you know, like I want you to see how hard I'm working. So and 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 you know, I'm working hard for for you and your siblings, so that you guys don't have to um, live the difficulties that I live. So I think part of me is that, like you know making her, her, her dream a reality and making all her sacrifice um, work. Um, and, and also, I think helping her. And, and you know, I, I, I don't want my mother to be working two jobs all her life, and she has done it for a while. And so give, giving back to, to her, to my family, um, 
and also making all the sacrifices that that that, that she's going to do for us. So, first, thank you so much for, for asking that question, um, and and I think for you asking that question, and for those of us who have experienced college, usually the question is, why wouldn't you want to go to college? Um, so I, I will try to put myself in the mindset of the other question, why to go to college? Um, but I think, like Fausto was talking about, one of the most important goals that I'm sure you all have is, is to make a better life for yourself and, and for your family. And I'm sure, as, as you saw in the film, all of the statistics that you're hearing, if you're bilingual, you're more likely to be employed, but if to be employed, you need a college degree. Um, and if, if you want to have more achievement within your own career, higher degrees, um, not just high school. And, and nowadays, of course, um, employment, especially jobs that I'm, that I'm sure many of you are aiming towards, most of those jobs will require at least a bachelor's degree, whether that's going towards the, the law or the business or the medical school route, or if you have a passion for the humanities and you want to pursue something in, in those areas, whether it's English or Latin American studies or history, politics, all of those careers and the things that you might be passionate about academically and career-wise will require a college degree. Um, but that's really just the logistics. The other part of it is the personal experiences. Uh, I'm sure both Fausto and I are, are very much different people compared to when we applied to college. And it, it is entirely because of the college experience, the Duke experience, the community, the mentors that we've had, and the resources that we've had access to that are only available through experiences like college. Um, I know that some of my most defining moments were specifically because of professors, inter internship opportunities that I had because of Duke University, and the community members and the friends that I made while here at Duke. Um, so whether it's the logistics of I want to be XYZ career title, or if it's because you want to grow as a person, um, I think both of those aspects are, are very, very important to you as, as young adults. And, and college, higher education, and university experience as a whole are, are really what um, will, will make those, those goals happen. Um, 